Hi, welcome back to my channel Pi by Me Maths. This is by Juvas Devan. So here we are going to learn chapter 7 normal distribution. So let me tell you this in normal distribution there are a lot of things to learn. But this video is for those who are taking IAL, PSN and Excel curriculum because I'm going to teach what's given in the IAL, PSN and Excel textbook. So what are the things you need in order to learn this chapter? You need to get ready with your textbook. If you don't have the textbook, I will leave a link in the description below. You can download the PDF version of the textbook and you need to have the data booklet. You all should know you'll be given a data booklet in the exam. I will leave a link in the description for you to download the PDF copy of the data booklet and you need to have a scientific calculator. So first, we learned about discrete random variable in chapter 4, right? Discrete random variable is a random variable that takes a particular value. Here we are going to talk about continuous random variable. So let's say you are taking the survey about the height of the adults in a certain place. So you always group them. That's a continuous random variable. We discuss about this in chapter 4, right? So let's say x takes the values 140 to 150. 150 to 160 so you group them okay here uh, the frequency how many of them between this height so let's say like 200 of them and here let's say you have 450 or something like this okay so this is a continuous random variable and we usually draw a histogram for the continuous random variable let's say using the frequency density and the class width let's say uh, here you are starting from 140, 150, 60. So let's say you get a histogram like this. You can draw a histogram for this data, right? Let's be careful. Now if you reduce the width of this, instead of taking 140 to 150, you frame another table now you reduce the width 140 to 145, 145 to 150, 150 to 155. So when you reduce the width of the bar, you can see the bar gets smoother and smoother. So you will get something like this. If you keep on reducing the class width, you will get histogram like this actually. something like this okay if you keep on reducing the width so the this one the curve if you look at the top of this histogram right it's going to be a bell shaped actually the mean of the data would be in the middle the mean would be in the middle let's say mean is like 175 the 175 would be here so in this normal distribution we are not going to interpret histogram here we will always be drawing a bell curve for every question you are going to draw a bell curve with the mean in the middle. Okay. And you need to know about certain notations and parameters here. So when a variable, random variable follows normal distribution, this is how we write it. Let's say the mean in the, is in the middle. We are going to use mu to denote the mean. And let's say sigma is the standard deviation. We are going to write it as x, we put this little wavy line, n of mu comma sigma square. That's how we are going to write. What does this mean? This means the variable, the continuous random variable x follows a normal distribution with mean mu standard deviation sigma. So let's say you say this, n of 10 comma 21. You should know the mu mean is uh, 10 and sigma square is 25. So standard deviation is square root of 25, 5. Okay. So if you see this notation, it's just telling us that the random variable follows a normal distribution with mean 10, standard deviation 25. So you are always going to see this bell curve. In fact, for every question you are solving, you have to draw this bell curve to interpret the data given. Now we are going to learn a few characteristics about this bell curve. 
The bell curve has a mean here. Let's say for this data, mean is 175. The curve is always symmetrical about the middle line mean. The curve is symmetrical about mean. So the next thing is the area under the curve is 1. In discrete random variable, we learned some of the probability is always 1, right? When you add all the probabilities, you will get 1. Here, the area under the curve is equal to 1. So when, this, when we say area under the curve, don't think about integration and all. Here we are talking about probability. This whole thing is going to be 1, the area under the curve. You will understand it better when we talk about uh, uh, how to use the tables and all. So do not worry about it. Now all you need to do is mean is in the middle, which is mu. Here in this case, mu is 175. And then the, the curve is symmetrical about this uh, middle line. And then the area under the curve is 1. And then the 60, 68 percentage of all the data lies within one standard deviation away from the mean. That means, let's say your mean, mu minus sigma is here, mu plus sigma is here, at somewhere this point. So if you take the area between these two points, this area is going to be 0 0.68. So how do we write it? We write it as P of mu minus sigma is less than n is sorry x the variable is x here is less than mu plus sigma is equal to 0 0.68 though we are saying area we are talking about probability here what does this mean let's say mu minus sigma for this data let's say mu is uh, 175 and sigma is mm, let's say 12 so mu minus sigma is going to be 175 minus 12, which is 163, is less than x, is less than mu plus sigma, 187. So probability of this, that means if you select a random person, probability that his height will be between this 163 centimeter to 187 centimeter is going to be 0 0.68 that's what this means and then if you take mu minus 2 sigma let's say mu minus 2 sigma is here mu plus 2 sigma is here and if you take the area between these two points the area between mu minus 2 sigma to mu plus 2 sigma it's going to be 95 percentage of the data lies within this range so it's going to be 0 0.95. It will, the probability will never be more than one. You know that, right? So that means the total area is one. It won't be more than one. And then merely all the data lies within this uh, mu minus two sig three sigma to three sigma to mu plus three sigma. Merely all the data, 99.7 percentage. So you can write it as 0 0.997. So the probability between mu minus 3 sigma to mu plus 3 sigma is going to be 0 0.997. You won't be mostly using these, these stuffs in your past paper questions when you solve the past paper questions, but still you need to understand this. I'm gonna repeat this again. 68 percentage of the data lies within one standard deviation away from the mean. 95 percentage lies two standard deviation away from the mean. 99.7 percentage, these percentages are very important. 99.7 percentage of data, that means almost all the data, lies between three standard deviation away from the mean.